Hey, my name is Nate. Um, I've been coming to Elevation since the beginning. Pastor Daniel called me up one day, asked if I wanted to help plant a church. I said, that sounds fun. And here, over a decade later, um, I'm here, I'm still doing it. So um, it's been a blast. And my name is Amy, and I came to Elevation because I met a barista at Starbucks named Dustin. And he told me all about his church and how awesome it was. And then that's where I met Nate. And about six years later, here I am. So Jesse is our firstborn son and he is now three years old. But about three and a half years ago, he came into the world um, at 32 weeks premature. I was by myself, I went in and got my ultrasound done and the ultrasound tech, the, her face just fell. So I called Nate and then she had me go down to another um, ultrasound room. And they tried to have me roll over to get him to move a little bit and at that moment they lost his heartbeat. Within three minutes, she was being wheeled down a hallway um, to go go have an emergency C-section. So he had had a grade four and a grade three um, brain bleeds on each side of his brain. So he had two holes in his heart. His lungs were super undeveloped. Everything in his body had been going to his brain and his heart to keep those two vital organs alive. So there's tons and tons of blood draws happening. He had two blood transfusions, multiple MRIs, you know, like the list just kind of keeps on, you know, falling out off the page. His head was just growing and growing too fast because the fluid was just building up and building up and building up and um, they decided they needed to do brain surgery. When you have these brilliant doctors at you know one of the best children's hospitals on on the planet scratching their heads you're like okay who can help me? Yeah. You know, what what where can I turn to? So I think it was the second night that I got to see Jesse and we're sitting in the hospital room and his oxygen levels kept tanking. And you would just hear this alarm go off and you would just sit in like breathless expectation wondering if that was gonna be his last breath. That was just one of those moments of just, okay Lord, we're just leaning into you and trusting. And the realization hit us, if our hope is in these guys, even though they're amazing and they're amazing doctors, their knowledge is limited. Our hope has to be in God. And leading up to that brain surgery, we were just so like determined and praying that he would not have that surgery. And um, he ended up having the surgery. And I think that's the cool part is that when you're trusting and you're putting your hope in God, um, you can trust when he says no. You can trust that it's for the greater good. And so when he said no, it didn't shake our faith. It didn't rock us. We just turned and said, okay, God, today, now, this is what we're praying. It's so easy for fear just to envelop you. And that's all you, be, all you see is the, oh no, what if this, what if that, all these, all these horrible things are happening right now. And um, um, we had a really great friend actually create a, a worship CD for us. So for the next four, five, six months, we had that thing playing around the clock. Just having that soundtrack and worshiping, I think that's what got us through because in the beginning you're just, you're given all of this news. The only thing that really got me through was just worshiping. I think another thing about the season is that it exposed the false things about God that I believe. You know, it's really easy to put God in a box and you think, okay, I think God should behave like this. And then something like this happens and all that stuff just gets laid bare, you know, and, and that's, it's an opportunity that God actually gets to speak to the core of, of who He is. It took four months, but finally at the end of four months, that last three days, they pulled him off the oxygen and they let him eat and they decided he could go home. So today, Jesse is a little man who loves to be with people. He like seeks people out to go and share his day with. We were at church a few weeks ago and uh, I had corralled him and gotten him to come back and it was a day when the nursery was not open and so he was not able to come back to kids ministry and um, so he was gonna sit out there with us for the, the time and he came back with me and he stood there for a minute and then he looked at me and he said, Mom, I have to go talk to the people. <laughs> And so he ran all over the sanctuary, just talking to everybody that he saw. I think when this all first happened, we didn't have that moment of blaming God or saying, why us, God? Rather, we just ran to him. And I think it just really showed me that we can actually come to him. 
specifically, we can come to Him with whatever the need, great or small, and that He is there and He is always present and He wants to help. And that um, as we were leaning in, He was preparing the way. He was preparing our hearts. He was preparing our minds. He was surrounding us with a family. Before Jesse's life started, I had maybe this kind of conception of, of God's heart. And now it's just, it's just off, off the scales. I don't have to live in a, a fear-based mentality or I don't have to live out of a, a place of um, weakness or despair. Last fall, I believe it was, the, the song Waymaker came on the radio and we got out of the car to play at the park right after it went off. And Jesse just took off running, singing Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness. My God, that is who you are. And he was just shouting it, shout singing it as he was running across the playground. And I just thought, man, that's a testimony. That is who my God is. There's a bridge away maker and it says, even though I can't see it, even though I can't feel it, you're working, you're moving. You never stop, you know. And knowing that even in the midst of the, you know, what we see immediately in front of us, that there's a lot more going on that we can't. I don't have to trust in what I see. I get to trust in what God says. So we have another son now. His name is Mark and he's 20 months old. And uh, we know we've actually had a lot of people ask us, um, how, how are you able to have another one? Weren't you scared um, that this one would end up in the NICU too? But we just decided at the outset that we really felt like the Lord wanted us to have another kid and um, we really desired to have another baby, and we were not going to allow fear to stop us from having another child. And so we just had to keep rising up and saying we will not bow down to fear. For people that are waiting on, waiting on God or that need a miracle, don't let what's right in front of you define who God is. Don't let it keep you from what God has in that moment, in the next days, weeks, months. You don't have to make excuses for God. You know, tell Him when it's hard. Tell Him everything on your heart. Express to Him exactly what you're feeling. He can handle it. Now is the time to get into your Word. Learn who Jesus is. Grow with Him, because He wants to do something in and through you now to prepare you for what's ahead.